This is Chef Paul. Today, Amy and I are practicing some social distancing. We have a little bit of a house party here. We got me, Amy, and our two cats. So I'm gonna wear a mask. No, I'm just joking. Uh, just want to shout out. You know what, guys? Uh, I know this really sucks. It's our, into our second year of COVID. Please, when you're out and about, wear your mask. Practice self uh, social distancing. Play it safe. It's the only way we're going to get rid of this, so we can go back to normal. We all want to go back to normal. As much as I'm, as much as you can call me normal, I understand, but it is what it is. Today we're going to be making uh, mushroom soup. Stir no, part of me, mushroom soupish chicken. It's an original dish. I haven't really given it a name yet, but it's something I've been meaning to try for a little bit. It's going to be really good. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a stick of butter, I'm going to stick it in this pan here and I'm going to turn the oven on and then I'm going to stick this in here and I'm going to turn the rear one on. Now this is going to be my gravy pot. So making gravy, if you have enough of your own gravy, great, use it, I don't. So. I'm just going to wait till it starts melting. I'm going to wait till this starts melting. But while I have that here, this one's melting good. I'm going to take some olive oil, or maybe not. Oh, this one, okay. We're going to take some olive oil. pretty much gone anyway so I'm going to set this aside here and then I'm going to open this one up and what the reason you want to do this is when you're when you're doing this with butter the butter is going to burn and it's going to go away we don't want that we want to have enough of the flavor so we're going to let this melt down these melt down as much as you can and one of the biggest pet peeves of any cook is you're never going to have a big enough kitchen because somebody doesn't like putting things away so I got to deal with that later by the way guys when you're operating kitchen try to put stuff away because it makes your life easier bad pull so anyways, one of the biggest pet peeves you're going to have as a uh, chef, unless you actually build your own house and you have everything you want that's actually yours, you're never going to have a big enough kitchen. It is what it is. One day, maybe Amy and I will be rich enough that we'll build our own house and the size of our whole apartment will be just the kitchen. We'll have show, we'll have space all around. I don't think that will ever happen, but you never know. So you're just going to start putting, just, you know, make sure you're applying the heat to it. Butter always makes things taste a little better, so it's always good to have. Now Amy and I, we don't like nuking things. We really don't. Nuking things suck. It just isn't good. So what we do, the night before we're ready to actually cook, we take our chicken, whatever we're making, we take it out, we put it in a big thing there, we let it melt down a little bit. So this is going down quite well. So what we're going to do now in this thing, we're going to dump some chopped fine garlic. I think Amy 
Jamie will tell you the same thing. Yo, you can't have too much garlic. And then we're gonna have a whole cut off onion. Now, while we're waiting for things to come down a little bit here, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Um, and this, I, I can't say this enough. Always include your stuff with garlic and onion. Uh, one of the things you're gonna find with COVID, if it's something you're worried about, like we are, uh, it's a it's a bad cold, right? It's a bad flu virus. But in my opinion, the best way to fight it is to amp your your vegetables up, amp your stuff up so that you're you're getting feeling better. This is a half a cup of flour. We're gonna dump that in here like this. We're going to take our whisk. We're just going to whisk this around here until it looks a little bit like this. Then what it's going to do, it's going to thicken our gravy up. So I'm using stock. I'm using beef stock. I like beef stock. You can use chicken stock. Heck, if you want, there's vegetarian stock on here, so you can definitely do that. And it's not going to take long to cook. If you can get stock on sale, if you don't make your own, it's not expensive, it's good, it's always good to have around for a while. Uh, Amy and I will sit there and both tell you we can we can always find a use for it. Uh, we both really, really like it. You're going to give it a really good stir. You're going to stir it around every now and again, give it good. Everything's going to melt in. Now for the chicken, one of the most important things you can do is, is while it's cooking, you're going to chop it up. Because you're not going to be eating chicken breast this way when you're done. If you wanted to buy chicken cubes, chicken thighs, whatever, you can do that. find that while it's frying up and it's getting solid, it's easier for us to, to heat it, or it's easier for us to, uh, to physically cut up. So Amy's just going to look at the chicken for a minute because this is chicken because it, it really will make a difference. Uh, raw chicken can really make a really bad mess, so, you know, give your hands a good washing. Now, Amy, did I tell you what we're having for lunch today? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put some nutmeg on here. Amy got this really cool little thing, it's called smoky tea ribs from Steep Tea. If you have a Steep Tea rib, or a Steep Tea representative, not a bad thing to uh, have a little discussion with them. If you're a tea drinker like my wife is, hit my wife up. Amy Woodworth from Facebook. She's a great person to tell you all about it. Uh, they have really good teas, even I have drank some of them every now and again, they're actually really good. Uh, and this is some ore oregano, and then we're going to use some Montreal steak spice. All right, so, oh yes, we're going to use a little bit of spice rum. And I 
can, don't worry, you're cooking with alcohol, but the alcohol will cook out, you're just getting the flavor. So back to what I was talking for Amy about lunch. We have this local restaurant here called uh, King of Donair. And what sets them aside from other Donair places? And Amy and I will like some specialty stuff every now and again. Uh, yesterday I got what they call a hot blonde. It's got a little bit of heat to it, not extremely hot, but a little bit of it. And they have Donair with pineapple. Um, it's a nice little mixture, makes a nice little sweetness to it. Uh, Amy and I are going to be splitting one in a little bit. Amy didn't realize when I got it yesterday that I was going to be sharing it with her. What do you say, Amy? It'll be really good. Okay, so Amy, get in here. See how nicely it's thickening up here? nice and thick and of course it would be better if you actually had the bones or you're making it fresh yes it's always going to be better but uh, it could be a lot worse if you didn't buy it from a can uh, we're going to let this go for another minute or two then we're going to take it right off the heat because it's pretty much almost done now so from now what we're going to do is we're going to finish cooking this up here when we feel that it's almost done, when everything's all started to cook and it's all cut up, we're going to put the mushrooms in for the last couple of minutes. These are all cut up. Two things of them. So I think this is done right now. So we're going to take this off the heat. I'm just going to continue to stir it a little bit, you know what I mean? It's pretty thick. And when we got the chop, when this is all chopped here, we're going to we're gonna put it into the gravy and that's how we're going to serve it. So, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch us do everything, right? You know how to chop vegetables, you don't need to watch me chop them. Uh, this is done, just continue to stir this, let this cook, take your knife, and just start slicing it down. It will cook faster, taking less time. So when I'm ready to start duping the mushrooms in, I'm gonna come back to you, and we'll go from there. Welcome back. Hey, by the way, if you're a Star Wars fan, let me remind you, this coming Tuesday, the Bad Batch starts. Excellent Star Wars uh, story worth watching. Okay, so the chicken's almost done here, so I'm just going to turn this, this back on here, and instead of putting the mushrooms in there, I'm going to put the mushrooms in here. So we're just going to do these in here, and I promise you Amy's going to go nuts when she tries this. Amy likes a really good chicken dish, she likes a really good mushroom dish. It's going to taste really good. So, Amy can come in here for a couple of seconds and take a good look at the chicken. Now see, that's been cut through all the way, cooked through. Amy and I had that all nicely cut thin. The mushrooms are in the or in our uh, gravy. Um, it's going to taste really good. chicken over a lot of things simply because you know what chicken uh, is just a lot more healthy there's a lot better stuff to it now when you're doing what I just did you got to be very careful because things are all over the bottom so I'm just going to wipe that off and I'm going to put that in the back here and I'm going to turn this off finish this all off here we're going to mix this in really good and we're going to serve this in a bowl um, you want
want to have a little bit of rice, some veggies in here. Uh, that's what we're making tonight, but, you know, not eating this right away. But for the sake of showing you all our hard work that we just did, I'm going to turn that off here. I'm going to grab one of our nice sexy little bowls. seasoning in here you should need even more uh, if you're somebody that likes salt put a little bit of salt in it put a little pepper in if you want uh, now I'm going to take the camera away from Amy and we're going to see how the chef Paul really did we're going to come out here though so Amy how's it look Amazing. All right, so. Although I didn't cut the chicken very good. <laughs> yeah, it'll be good enough. Remember, guys, use a little bit of an apron or cooking it, but it should have a lot of gravy to it. The texture on that should be really good. All right, Amy. Mmm. That the taste? is excellent. What's it taste like? Must it tastes like? I don't know how to describe it. Is it like your Jelly Belly jelly beans? No. Give me some taste and textures here. You're telling the world here. Ah, it tastes like gravy and you can't even really taste the mushrooms. But you can taste a little bit though, right? Mmm. Amy's not always the most descriptive of things. That's not her gift, but... No. But she, uh, but you should have nice mushroom taste throughout it. Uh, they're not really cooked that long. You can cook them a little bit longer if you want. I'm not a big fan of cooking them all the way through unless you have a really mm. good, expensive mushroom. That'd be a little bit different. But, so anyways, that's our dish for this week. I'm gonna call it mushroom chicken melt. Mm. Uh, really, really tasty. So if you like it, please hit likes, share, subscribe, tell all your buddies about it. And this is, uh, and this is Amy uh, picking her uh, face out. Mm. Yummy. So, <laughs> till next time, have a great day and thanks for joining.